Good day, learners! Welcome to the continuation of our lesson about plant reproduction. Now, we have a sexual reproduction in non-flowering plants. Non-flowering plants, also called gymnosperms, do not reproduce through flowers but reproduce by means of releasing large numbers of spores. May mga halamang hindi namumulaklak kung saan hindi bulaklak ang ginagamit nito upang magparami. Maaring sa pamamagitan ng spores o kaya naman ay ang iba't ibang parte ng katawan nito. Isang halimbawa ng non-flowering plants ay ang conifers. Conifers are non-flowering seed plants that produce seeds in cones. Ang conifers ay isa ring halimbawa ng unisexual plant kung saan maaaring ang isang cone ay may taglay na sperm cell o kaya naman ay egg cell. Paano ito dumadami? The male cones release pollen grains which are blown by the wind. If pollen lands on female cone, it fertilizes the female egg cell. The fertilized egg develops into a seed. Tandaan natin, kapag ka nagkaroon ng union between male and female sex cells, pwedeng magkaroon ng fertilized egg na pagmumula ng panibagong halaman. Aside from conifers, other example of non-flowering plants are ginkgo biloba, cypress, and cycas. Ano naman ang asexual reproduction? It is the production of new plants with only one parent involved. Production of seed is not needed. Kung sa, kung sa sexual reproduction, kailangan ng male and female parent para magparami dahil dito manggagaling ang egg cell at sperm cell, sa asexual reproduction, isang parent lang ang kailangan para dumami yung uri nito. Hindi rin kinakailangan ng buto o seed para dito magmula ang panibagong halaman. Ibig sabihin nun, maaaring sa pamamagitan ng parte ng katawan niya, magmumula ang pagpaparami. Here are ways on how to reproduce plants asexually. Pwede through vegetative propagation, fragmentation, budding, or spore formation. Ilan sa mga ito ang ating pag-aaralan? Simulan natin sa vegetative propagation. It is a form of asexual reproduction where new plants are produced from one part of a parent. Alam nyo, ito yung madalas na ginagamit din upang mas ma mapabilis na dumami ang mga halaman. Nangangailangan lang ito ng isang parte ng katawan ng halaman para dumami sila. Maaring gamitin ng stem, leaves, or roots nito. Here are some examples of modified stems and roots. Maaring galing ito sa isang parent plant para gamitin na dumami ito. So ilan sa mga ito ay ang bulb. It is a rounded stem with fleshy leaves. Example of these are onion and tulip. So kung titignan natin yung halimbawa o yung larawan, makikita natin na merong leaves. Ito yung stored food. And then we have the bulb. And then at the bottom of the bulb, dito naman tumutubo yung mga roots. Rhizome, a horizontally growing stem. Examples of these are the ginger and the lotus. Corm, a short vertical stem. Examples are gladiolus and taro or gabi. We also have the tower, a fleshly underground stem or root. Examples are potato, which is actually a stem, and sweet potato, which is actually a root. We also have stolons or runners. Stolons or runners are modified leaves that do not grow underground, but instead it crawls along the ground. Strawberry is an example of runners or stolons, and then the Bermuda grass. Now, how fern moss and punjai 
reproduce. Ilan ito sa mga simpleng halaman na madalas din nating nakikita? Pero natanong mo na ba kung paano nga ba sila dumadami? So, fern, moss, and fungi reproduce by spore formation. Spore formation or sporulation is common among fungi and simple plants like mosses and ferns. So, nakikita ninyo sa picture yung mga itsura ng mga binabanggit nating halaman. Spore contains cells enclosed in a thick case. When the case cells burst open, spores are spread in the air. The spores settle on the ground and under good conditions grow into a small heart-shaped plants. Tignan mo yung ferns. Kung meron ka nito sa bahay ninyo o sa bakura ninyo, pagka tinignan mo yung kanyang likod na bahagi, ng mga dahon, makikita mo may mga parang yellow na bilog-bilog. So, ito yung lalagyan na ng mga spores. Kapag yan ay uh, bumukas, parang itatapon nito yung kanyang mga spores kung saan mapupunta naman ito sa lapag. So, kapag ka ito ay uh, nag-develop dahil maganda yung binagsaka na lupa, maaari itong mag-grow into a small heart-shaped plant. So, dito magmumula yung panibagong fern. The small plants produce egg and sperm cells. The sperm cells swim to the egg cells. When a sperm cell and egg cell unite, the new cell develops into a leafy fern. The small heart-shaped plant soon dies. So, we can see the plant cycle or the fern life cycle kung saan Uh, mula doon sa maliit na heart-shaped plant, manggagaling si egg cell and then si sperm cell. So, mula doon, lalaki ito. Kapag kalumaki ito, mamamatay na si heart-shaped si heart plant. And then, si maliit na halaman o maliit na fern, lalaki-lalaki ito. Okay? Tapos, magiging yung nakikita na natin na fern o pako sa Tagalog. So, yun ang kabuuan na ng ating lesson. So, my question is, how well do you remember the lesson? So, ang mga susunod mong makikita ay isang paraan para maalala mo kung ano ba yung ating pinag-usapan. So, identify the following plants if they reproduce sexually or asexually. So, in the first picture, we have tomatoes. So, tomatoes reproduce sexually. How about katakataka? Okay, it reproduce asexually. Next, watermelon. Watermelon reproduce sexually. Roses. It reproduce Sexually. How about garlic? Okay, it reproduce asexually. So I hope you did learn from our lesson. Till next time. Good luck. God bless.